bit of a chat, dude. Yeah, wing it. Uh, killer. Yo. Hey, hey, how you all going? It's John, that Aussie metal guy with crank.com and with that metal station. And today it's with great pleasure I get to have a chat with Derek Boyer, bassist for Suffocation, who are due to release their Peers from Within live and North American album, uh, which is, comes from the classic Peers from Within bloody album. Comes out November 12th, man. I'm enjoying what I've heard so far and I can't wait to get my fucking hands on this album, dude, especially the vinyl. So cheers for joining me, man. Hell yeah. Thank you. I don't want to disappoint everybody it was frank's farewell but it is yeah. kind of a, a mix-up of frank's favorite songs so there's more than just pierced on there ah oh, awesome yeah dude. yeah there's this there's it's frank set we said frank was doing his farewell his go away you know his uh he was signing off in north america and we knew for a while that he was trying to wrap it up but um yeah he picked the set list so it's a fucking mashup oh, of his wow. favorite song it's sick but it's a lot of fear you know your standard everybody's like pierce give me the pierce shit so <laughs> but it's it's a mix it's sick it came out really cool man so i'm glad you got to peep a little bit of it and can't wait for to hear what the world thinks of it we're all proud of it so it's gonna be sick yeah man what was that show like for the people that couldn't be there like that would have been a you fucking know, ripping show to give frank that good farewell on this sick. album to go we out on yeah, we would get tons of great energy everywhere we went. You know, Frank was like, you know, I love the show, but I fucking hate being told where to be and where, when, what to eat. And, you know, can't do this, can't do that. And Frank's a pretty particular guy. And, you know, we all support him in his decisions, even though it's hard to see, you know, your boy of 30 years, you know, saying, hey, I don't want to do it anymore. And it's not that he doesn't want to play. He just, it's all the other bullshit. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're giving him a, a farewell you know, on his terms kind of thing. And I mean, the energy's just been great. I mean, suffocation, pretty much no matter what we do, we flip out, the people flip out. It's it's always been good. You know, I've been doing it with him for about 20 years and uh, it's been so sick. And uh, that particular show, you know, it's like everyone's like, how did you pick, you know, the show? We went around and recorded like 30 shows. And uh, that was just the one that had the magic in it. And, uh, you know, it was tough because, you know, it could have been Dallas. It could have been this. It could have been that. But we went, we were just outside of Boston and uh, in a place called Cambridge, real famous college or some kind of education. That we're just musicians. So we don't follow <laughs> all that stuff, but real famous school up there. It's like one of the Harvard, you know, one of those kind of places. And, uh, you know, to come off the stage and look everybody in the face and go, that was a sick one. And everybody was able to say, yeah, that was a good one where, you know, on other nights where everything went great, you know, somebody, you know, knocked Frank's mic out of his hand, you know, a fan or something, you know, it's so we had technical problems on other shows that were great that uh, this particular one just had all the right magic in it. And uh, we all went, fuck yeah, let's do it. And it was mixed and mastered by randomly enough, uh, the guitarist of Cryptopsy. Yeah. Donald Christensen is a sick engineer with a killer studio. And it was one of those things where, you know, we're like, who the fuck should mix this? You know, we were taking cracks at it because, you know, we're all like, we're all, you know, uh, amateurs, semi-professional engineers. But, you know, we said, look, let's get it into some fresh ears. And who do we know that, you know, wouldn't bang us over the head too hard, you know, with the money to, to mix and master it. And Donald Chris, Christian Donaldson was just like, yo, I got you boys. What's up? Send me a test mix and I'll send you something back. And it was killer. So everything just worked out, man. Like all the pieces kind of just, fell in line right where they were supposed to kind of right when they needed to with this damn pandemic you know we haven't played in 20 months yeah. and uh we're not Fuck. we're not one of those young bands that lives on the internet with all the social media shit i mean it's a necessary evil we have all the bullshit social media stuff that you kind of have to have but we're we're not those young bands that are like living off of that aspect of it we're a live band and uh we didn't take advantage of this pandemic at all i mean we wrote we wrote about half of the new album so i mean it helped and there was probably some subliminal reset button that was hit that we don't know but uh we want to be back on stage you know we don't want to be fucking sitting at home and on fucking instagram and shit fuck that know. you know we want to then again it's necessary but we don't live for it so other young bands or any other professional bands took a lot of advantage of the free time and the pandemic and capitalize on it and we we went the other way around we would fucking sit there and just get ripped and go this is bullshit <laughs> you know when are they gonna let us play again and uh finally uh coming up in november we're gonna start playing um you know they're starting to loosen up the restrictions and stuff so we got 
um, starting the first weekend in December, uh, November, maybe not the first one, but on November 5th, we're down in Atlanta in yep. Georgia. And then the following weekend, we're in New York in Long Island, where we're from. And then a uh, weekend after that, I believe, check the websites if you're in the northern part of North America, but I'm talking to the Australian fans. It doesn't really apply to you guys. But anyway, we're getting three shows in North America in November. Uh, the last one's near Washington, D.C., capital of the fucked up country we live in. And uh, <laughs> next thing you know, uh, we got a show. We have a show in the Netherlands, um, a Eindhoven Metal Meeting. Uh and that'll be wrapping up the year for us. And then uh, next year, uh, we, I was telling somebody else that they had, they had put together this entire Australian tour uh, that was slated for 2021. And we were ready because I guess it was like, shit, 2015 or 2016 since we've been over there. Yep. Fuck yeah, let's, we love Australia. We love the people. The fans are fucking sick. Let's get over there. We said yes to everything. The booking agents and the uh, promoters and everything got everything lined up. And then sure as shit, right when we're like, pull the trigger, let's do it. Let's get the plane tickets. They're like, nope. Uh, the, the Australian government was like, fuck off. If you're not, you know, any non-Australian passport, you're not getting in. You know, we're not risking bringing in your bullshit. <laughs> so, and, and I just heard tonight they're lifting the lockdown for Australia. Yep. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah it's it's I opening just up. Heard that. Yeah, it's opening so, up back here. It's been oh, fucking crazy time. I over there. Let's get over there. We're ready. We said yes to it. So as soon as they can make that happen, we'll be over there ripping for you guys. Can't wait. Can't oh. wait to get back over there. Oh, that's going to be unreal, dude. And the thing is, like, even though people missed out on catching, man, some, like, especially over here in Australia and all over you, the fans you've got all over the bloody world, we can still grab this album and relive this fucking great night of Frank's last show there. You know, he's kind of awesome. a farewell show, I mean, which yeah. is going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah really bloody good and then i noticed you guys are also playing europe is it next year as well so you fucking start yeah set up some shows for you europe know, they look dope man. we were we were over there and uh when the pandemic hit we didn't take it seriously we're like yeah bullshit this will <laughs> blow over it's some conspiracy or whatever and we had just done our shows in russia we popped into finland did all the nordic nordic countries uh pop going down going down south getting through into europe we got about halfway into the tour and all of a sudden like Hey, the Italian shows, Italy got slammed with COVID. They got hurt bad with it. And they were one of the first European countries to get really kicked in the balls over it. And the next thing you know, like uh, Italian shows canceled, uh, Spain shows canceled, Portugal shows canceled. And we're like, fuck, fuck, fuck. fuck. And we, we had like just played in Austria. And like, as we're driving out of the country, they're like closing the borders behind us. Like we skated through there. Like we almost got stuck in Austria. We almost got stuck somewhere else. And all of a sudden, we're in Switzerland and Terrence comes up to me and he's like, yo, we got to get the fuck out of here. And I'm like, you want to go back to the hotel? What do you mean? We just, got, we just left the hotel. And he's like, no, we got to get the fuck out of Europe. We got to get back to the U S or they're going to close everything. And uh, I had planned to stay back with my chick who's in Germany for like two weeks or something after the tour, which I flew into Germany yesterday and proposed marriage to her today. I'm in Germany right now. Congratulations. So Hopefully that's, she said, she said yeah. Said yeah, I mean, yeah, good shit, yes. man. Congratulations, bro. That's so bloody that good, went, man. That went down. But yeah, I was supposed to stay with her after the, the European tour. So when all of a sudden it was getting cut off, I said, fuck it. Let's um, all stay behind. You know, leave me with all the merchandise. We had just reordered all fucking 10 new boxes of merchandise and shit. And now all of a sudden there's no more shows. They cancel the tour. The boys bounce. They leave out of Switzerland head back to New York, I end up getting stuck in Germany for three months. No commercial flights. I mean, again, trapped with your girl that you yes. love. Not yeah. the worst Not thing. Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> trial by fire. You know, we got through it without killing each other. And that was a good sign. So here we are 20 months later and it all worked. I'm, I'm lucky. I've been flying back and forth to yep. uh, Germany probably about 10 times since the pandemic had happened. A good eight, 10 times or something like that. They won't let her into the U.S. still. They won't you know, it's a one-sided thing. I can fly over to here, but non-US passports, just like Australia, yeah. they were closed. And come November, November 8th, they're lifting it. So she'll be flying over the 10th or the 12th or something into New York. And, or yeah, yeah. And then she'll do all the, the uh, US shows with us. Well, she'll miss uh, that first one in Atlanta. But then, uh, then we have a European show, like I was saying at the very end of the year, the Eindhoven metal meeting. So yeah. I'll come over, stay with her, do that shit. And then hopefully everything just knock on that fucking wood that um, 
nothing goes wrong and we get to do the rest of that that european show those european shows that you were talking about led me into this whole cyclone of information was uh we're rapping we're continuing we're picking up that tour right where it left off same bands same cities yeah. so we'll go get the italian dates we'll go get the spain dates and we'll wrap that tour up and then hopefully next we'll get over to australia and i know we're doing the record but um we need to get down there because that whole thing's all lined up for us so hopefully we'll be in australia in 2022 hopefully the european shit doesn't fuck up with new variants delta variant bullshit whatever yeah. whatever yeah. Delta. I mean, it's obviously real it's obviously yeah. real it's killed it's people but it's yeah. such a bullshit fucking money maker you know it's bullshit really know, money maker because the government's fucked, up. fucked it yep just the it music seems... industry though i think the way they've handled the music industry shit. and it, albums like live albums um this one for me bring into the spotlight how important the live metal scene is for the music community especially the heavy metal community because you know there's a lot of fucking yeah. assets that that's think not... they just can stream an album on spotify and they're supporting a band and it's not mm, Go, going same. and buying not albums same. fucking getting that not, merch nope. and going along to shows is how you really support right. the scene and the bloody community and especially like fucking suffocation Real. like you were saying that's a band that thrives on stage and yeah, you, know, you don't need have it. to ride those social medias because um, your no, we're doing it. fans are hardcore fans, man. They're going to be doing there at it the real. shows. They're going to buy the albums. Exactly. And you know exactly. they're there for the bloody music, not this fucking... For the real right reasons, fake, yeah. Fake shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. We are one of those real t-shirt and jeans bands. No smoke and mirrors. You know, you get what you... You know, you. we are who we are and what we are. There's no phony baloney bullshit that rolls with us. You know, we, we go and we kill it the fans appreciate it and then we do it all again you know we'll be back we'll see you cats on the next time and we do we thrive off the live stuff it's it's our job and so when you take away that aspect of our job i mean luckily we recorded the live album that yeah gave us you know something to give to the people because yeah, the people get hungry they want new shit and you know for us that that performance is new and uh, but those that's, you know, some older rehashed material. So now we're working on the new record. We got about half of it done. Uh, Eric, our drummer from Canada, just got into New York yesterday. So I got to stick around here a couple more days with the girl and then I got to get home to rehearse for those shows. So it's I'm so excited to get back to playing with the fucking whole band. You know, it's ready. We're ready. What, what's one of the things you miss most about playing live there, Derek? Like, I'm sure there's a tall it's fucking just, stack of things, but what's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like waking up in a new city every day, you know, like, where the fuck are we? You know, and so, you know, it's always been fun to find out, you know, oh, where the fuck are we? <laughs> you know, because you, you play the show and you, you pass out and you wake up in front of the next venue. Yeah, I mean, at least I do. I sleep like a fucking vampire. So, I mean, maybe some of the other guys see the road on the way in, but it's like, we stay up late rage it up a bit pass out wake up in front of the next venue and then do it all over again so for me it's like that, that live show that energy and to feel a different country or city's energy daily it's like it's not like you're playing you know for new yorkers every day every day every day and you'd know that vibe yeah. like literally you know from here perth handles us totally different than sydney does so it's like the same kind of idea you know going to a different city going to a different country daily that part getting different energy on the day-to-day -day is the real thrill and it's like the movie groundhog's day we're doing the same thing every day but we get to perfect it you know in over 20 years you really get to you know like fucking bill murray learn how to play crazy classical piano you know like <laughs> mastered the thing and all in one day but you know it was like a lifetime's worth of study but it's the same thing with us it's like every day the show is exactly the same we learn you know what not to do and hey, this works, let's utilize this daily. But every single day we get to do, you know, we do 150, 200 live shows a year. Yeah. And, you know, to get that taken away for 20 months, man, it felt crazy. I'm so excited. November is right around the corner and we're about to start fucking reliving, you know, start doing what we do. So yeah, well, it, we're all amped. We're all fired up about it. I bet you. And an album like this, the Suffocation fans can kind of relive that experience of being at a sure. live Suffocation show as well. Right, 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 right. Yeah, we're getting to fucking rip it up. And that that album is a great portrayal of who we are today, you know, because you can say, OK, Suffocation has been through a handful of drummers or a handful of guitar, whatever the hell we've done. Like the band is really playing so good right now that 
to, to hear this live album, I think our fans will be like, wow, this band has to slip. You know, they lost this dude. Oh, it's such a bummer. Holy shit, the new oh, guy they got is great. <laughs> yeah, so fucking, you know, check it out. I think the live album is going to really open up a lot of eyes because, you know, you, you do swap a drummer every five years, not by choice, you know, like one of the original guys had a kid, you know, and we got to respect life. him for wanting to. We've all got yeah, lives life. outside of this shit, exactly. man. You know? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is our passion. But, you know, like me with the girl, you know, like everybody's like, holy shit, do it. That's great. You know, and then the same thing when I'm not focusing on her, it's all about the death metal. But again, we do have lives outside of it. But uh, we all pretty much live this shit, you know, so there's what we call a lifer. You yeah. know, this guy's in it for the right reasons and he's doing it, playing for the song. You know, you get these, you know, young kids that are so goddamn talented, but, you know, are they going to? Are they going to stick it out or are they just doing this because this is what's going on this year? You know, and it's like for us, we got a great team of guys that are not going anywhere. Just going to start, you know, getting better and better at working off of each other. And that's what we got right now. So it's exciting time, even though we're like way late and deep into our career. It's still exciting. Oh, we still got damn passion right. in, in the music, you know, in the and writing, you know, like, OK, we can't stray too far from the path on what suffocation is. But how do we? recreate the wheel you know how do we break the mold and do what we do you know like without you're not going to hear suffocation with fucking synthesizers and high <laughs> clean vocals it's not who we are but you know and then a lot of people say oh everything's been done no. terrence hobbs is living proof that everything has not been done this That's dude's it. doing such fucking sick shit that's still within the guidelines of what suffocation is but that's fucking mind-blowing because it is new it's you're going to hear a lot of you know, new techniques and stuff on the, that's what we're, where we're at right now. You know, it's yep. like, what are we? We're, we're a live band. You know, yeah. we're not the studio band that, you know, it's going to get in there and do something that we can't do live. Cause that, you know, you hear these albums and you go, wow, these bands are so good. And then you see them live and you're like, oh. the fuck? <laughs> so they either did something funny in the studio or they forgot how to play, or maybe they're having a bad night. Or, I mean, I don't know, it's tricky, but you know, we are what you see is what you get we're going to do in the studio what we can reproduce live you know so it's exciting man it's, it's a ton of fun so this album um the live tour show you done it started with thrones of blood it's the opening track on it we've ended with infecting the crypts is there a track that you love like real as favorite to play out of all those ones off the album that you, you know that, really the shit out that, of? that question comes up and i think we we uh every, it's so fun too because everybody likes something a little bit yep. different but they all kind of have the same elements you know this this grinding real quick syncopating gnarly shredding guitars lined up with the grinds and for me personally um funeral inception the opening track from despise the sun yeah. is just something so ferocious about it it hits you with a slamming double bass part with the syncopation is sick it's like a groove and you know it's yeah. really aggressive and then the fast stuff i've got this new technique you know a lot of bass players use a pick and then uh, they use their fingers. They're utilizing like, I don't know, half time. And I mean, I'm guilty of learning my way through the ranks of, you know, the thing I'm saying right now, this new thing I'm doing is, is so unique. And I'm able to, to lock in with the guitars going. Ding, 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 ding. And before, you know, it'd be like, da, 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 which is fine because that's what the kick drum's doing. Or you could, you know, leave the fourth 16th note silent and go dig it up, dig it up, dig it up, dig it up. Not playing yep. dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, still playing the same value, but, and then now I'm to the point where thumb and pinky, so I'm able to syncopate with them. And I mean, it's still, it's still hit or miss, you know, it's one of those trial and error kind of things, but I'm getting really comfortable at this really difficult technique. So in funeral, I get to lock in with the guys. And uh, again, it's a lot of syncopating at, at temples that are, fucking ferocious so it's it's super fun for me um there's a lot of good songs on on that uh that track so i would say either funeral or uh i really like um surgery of impalement another yeah. old school video song from the souls to deny album and we brought the song souls to deny back you know so we brought a bunch of really and frank yeah. chose the songs you know frank yeah, say that man. Or like killer tracks it's, it's his his farewell so we're like let him do it and it's really funny he didn't touch the last album he didn't even fucking touch it. Not even a single. We're like, damn, dude, you don't even want it. He's like, fuck, it. you know, whatever he wanted to do, we were going to honor it. And it's funny. Frank's a character. Man. I like the respect, though. He just kind of, that you just all have together. It's really, really bloody cool to hear the way it's you a guys. Family. Yeah, it, that's it. it. Really you is. know what I mean? And there's no fucking ill will. 
no negativity, mate. It's no. just suffocation no. doing its thing. And it's, Frank's just going yeah. off to do what he needs to do, man. And yeah. He I wants just... to lay by the pool with his with his whiskey and fucking get into it, brother. I'll come by and that's it. Into that motherfucker with Yeah. So we honor him, what his decisions are. We could sit there and go, oh, that's bullshit. You know, <laughs> what are you doing? You know, but we're like, fuck that. We're grown ass. Kids, you know? you do something? Go, go ahead. Do it, brother. Go do it, you know? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, rip it up. You know, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I gotta you seem ask. to be the right kind of mind for it. You got the same feeling as us. You know, a lot I of people are like, oh, that's bullshit. You're like, fuck it. You know, it's okay. the same as us. We've all got yeah, lives, exactly. man, right. outside of exactly. this. And we all want to do other shit, mm-hmm. you know? So mm-hmm. fucking more power to it. I thank Frank for all yeah. the, the years of great music. He's yeah. done regardless, man. Years, it's unfucking real, dude. He's 30 years, dude. That's an honorable, that's an honorable, honorable right. fucking that, career, man. That's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears for death metal in the exactly. music industry no and doubt. the heavy scene for sure, Honor. dude. 100%, 100%. i got to ask quickly, okay. Derek, do you have a highlight, man? Like, I know you've got a shit ton of highlights in all your years playing with Suffocation, but is there one that really sticks out for you, man? I mean, over the years, we've gotten to such ridiculous shit. You know, like, I was I was thinking about this one the other day, and I mean, it's not really, like, a highlight, but it's just the crazy shit that, get, that goes down. And one time we were drinking so heavily, um, I don't remember where the hell we were, somewhere not in the U.S., and there was, like, a hotel room, and... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I was doing, but there was a bed and then another bed and then this big window that didn't have any screen or any bars and it was wide open and we're drinking and smoking and I'm doing flips from the one bed onto the other bed and I literally go flying, double popped and and I land like right in between the window and I overshot the bed and then, you know, Frank happened to come in the room like right then as I'm flying through the fucking air. And he's like, dude, you almost went out the window. We were like nine flights up. And it's just like, this is the kind of crazy shit that we were doing when we were younger, you know? And now it's like, hey, there's a window. I'm going to hold this wall down. I'm not getting anywhere near that shit. You know, we, walk <laughs> out. we were in Peru and we walked out in the patio. You know, you flip the curtains open and the patio was made of glass. And we were like, I don't know, 10, 15 flights up. And literally, I'm like, I don't even when I was a kid, you know, when we were younger, I would have been out there drinking and going nuts. And now I'm like, looking at it, I'm like, I don't even want to set foot on it. It was literally a glass box that had walls, a ceiling, a wall, and a floor. And as soon as you open the curtain, you could see this marvelous view. We were in Peru and I couldn't believe it because I was like, yo, back in the day, we were nuts. We would have been trying to figure out, you know, how we could fucking throw some fire bombs off this thing or whatever and, and now it's like i ain't getting anywhere near that yeah crazy stuff and that's not even like the highlights of us playing you know like there was a there was an instance where we were down in uh somewhere deep down in italy like the boot heel of italy and this is a long time ago this is like 04 or something and uh the the rhythm that we were playing and I think I might have told this one somewhat recently, so it's not redundant, but hopefully the Australian fans didn't catch whatever the hell that other weird one. I was telling this exact story that, you know, the rhythm. And the whole crowd was like right in the melody line with us. Uh, and it was so wild to hear like you know hundreds of Italians screaming back the melody line to us and I had another highlight that was like that I don't think I told anybody this one was uh we were in Copenhagen Denmark on my birthday in front of like 30,000 people and Ricky the vocalist was like the guy's replacing Frank he's like yo everybody it's Derek's birthday you know wish him a happy birthday and like to hear like 30,000 people go happy birthday Derek I was like Holy shit, I choked me up. I had to like turn around and be like, whoa, that was fucking heavy. Like I've never, you know, someone goes happy birthday. You go, that's great. Thanks. You know, when but you 30,000 people. Yeah. Oh my God. dude, I, It got, I teared. I was like, whoa, shit. That reminds me of another one of Frank recently. We were in New York city and he had, you know, officially, it might've been on the farewell tour. He had officially, you know, told the world that he wasn't doing it anymore. And, and New York was so intense on him and it choked him up. And he, instead of turning around, he just fought through it. And he's like, there's no crying in death metal. Fuck this. You know, and he was like so pissed off. <laughs> the and choked up over it. And uh, just great, man. We, we're so fortunate. We, we've done, like I was saying to somebody else, like if I disintegrated off this fucking planet tomorrow, I would be so content, you know, because I've 
we've done and I've personally done so much more than I thought I would have or we would have done. And it's just like, I mean, if the whole thing ended tomorrow, I could just be like, that was sick. You know, that was such a fun run, you know, and I didn't think it would go this far and who knows how far it'll continue. But it's just been such a wild ride from the, you know, getting very proficient at playing big shows, you know, because at first when you play a big show, you're like, this is fucked up. I can't hear nothing. This is intense with all these people. And it's hard to really, you know, learn all these different aspects in real time. You know, if, if you had the Groundhog's Day thing and you could just work on this one aspect, well, so this trouble thing, you don't see that again for another six months. So it's yeah. not like you get to perfect it. And so like getting proficient at playing big shows, big crowd, big stages where your fucking drummer is, you couldn't spit on, you know, your drummer's too far away and, you know, learning how to get the monitors dialed in right. So you can actually feel it the way a small club feels and that you're used to. And I mean, just every aspect of it, you know, we're, we've gotten comfortable doing really difficult shit that was hard for us, you know, and then it's like, now, wow, these things are, really challenging have become comfortable so it's it's just an honor and a privilege to have done as much as we've done and like i said i hope it doesn't end tomorrow i hope we get to level up even again you know we were joking we're like man slayer bowed out who's the next who's the next big boy that will be honored and respected by you know because it is such a trip too i'm sorry i'm jumping over all kinds of different aspects but you know being that i'm not the original guy but i've been there almost 20 years you know people don't know that there was other guys you know from every show that they've been to in the last 20 years it was me and so i'm like yo i'm not even the original cat humble <laughs> about it you know and then and then to think you know getting these new young fans they're not gonna know who frank was you know and obviously if they yeah. do their homework they'll yeah. they'll go back and go who this guy was sick <laughs> but right now yeah playing in front of these younger audiences they're just gonna see a band ripping shit up and you know because if, if we only played in front of the old school fans, they would be like, oh, man, we miss Frank, which even Ricky, the, the current guy that's replacing him, is like, dude, this is this is brutal, you know, because he grew up playing shows with and seeing Frank play, you know, his his whole young career. And now he's in his shoes that uh, these young fans, you know, like I said, unless they go back and do their homework, they're going to embrace Ricky as holy shit, this band's sick not like oh where's frank you know because we'll get that you know but hey you give the band a chance the band is playing like so good right now that i <laughs> think if if you give it a chance yeah you'll still miss frank he's a nutcase the shit he says is ridiculous you know he's brutal vocalist he says absurd shit like yeah this next song is going out to walmart you know you can go in there pick up a shotgun some duct tape garbage bags some rope some razor blades a bunch of bleach and you know when you're checking out the lady's like wow look at all this shit you know you have a good night sir and he's like i will you'll read about it in the paper tomorrow <laughs> you know, like, he's nuts you know he's totally nuts and we love him for it but at the end of the day you know this has just been a wild ride we're so stoked that frank you know went out on his terms yeah and it is what it is we're going to continue doing it and uh it's sick man it's uh, sick the band's playing good Respect where respect's due, Derek, man. That's massive right, man. fucking Thank you, brother. massive dude. Pleasure to fucking get now, to chat with you about this, man. Hell yeah. What what part of uh what part of Australia are you in? I'm in South Australia. I'm like in the little okay. bit down the bottom there near Adelaide. So yeah. Okay. So if we come through, we can look forward to seeing you in Adelaide. Oh, uh, I'll be there, mate. Even on the east coast, I'll come over and see you guys. It's not come a problem, on out, man. Come on out. We'll, oh, we'll, we'll be go over. Fucking he's, tanks he's and the beers trip. or whatever oh. the hell. Definitely, Derek. Oh, yeah. Down some beers, man. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, Come man. find us. We'll make sure you get in on the guest list. Come find us. You know, get down to the show early and we'll chill, brother. Uh, legend, bro. Yeah. Any last words, shout right. outs, or thank yous you'd like to add in there, my friend? We just can't wait to get back down and play for the Australian people. They're so fucking great. They're not only are they one of the more aggressive, we get this question a lot, you know, where's your favorite place to play? And uh, who's the most aggressive? And uh, man, we have seen bathrooms covered in blood and not like oh this guy went after this guy no just it happens like this and i don't want anybody getting hurt but my point is the australian fans really rip it up in the pitch yeah. for us they really show a ton of energy for us and australia is one of our favorite places i mean you know we can't really say we hate going to play this territory but we do really like playing for the australian people so we're really looking forward to getting back down there and they, i think they have it all lined up 
if they let this, if they lift the, the travel restrictions and let people back in, we're already all lined up. So it's okay. just a matter, you know, they booked the whole thing and they were just about to pull the trigger on getting the plane tickets. And it was like, nah, they said, fuck you. <laughs> You're not getting in. You're not getting in anytime soon. But, you know, we're all vaccinated, yep. you know, maybe against our, maybe against some of our better judgment. But, yeah, same. I'd, you know, we it needs to be done. I just want music back, dude. Yeah, I, I couldn't give a fuck about said, it. Whatever it takes, whatever <laughs> it takes. If you got to fucking paint my hair fucking red to let me in your country let's paint it up you know like yeah, so we got to do what we got to do to go certain places and we all did it the whole band's vaccinated again like some of us are like oh this is yeah. bullshit but Same. we got to do what we got to do i don't yeah, think it's gonna kill us and if it does we had a great run <laughs> we had a great run dude i need a job and i need to go see some gigs so fuck it give it to me i don't give let's a fuck let's do it let's go we gotta <laughs> let's go, go. Yeah. Derek, brother totally. can't wait to catch up for brew when you get over to australia thank you very much for making you know some time to have a Come chat find with me, us. Mate. I will fuck do yeah, definitely. Brother. Yeah, uh, have a great night, my man. Well, is it early over there for you? Yeah, early, man. 10 a.m. And congratulations oh, on the album and the engagement, dude. Fucking Thank awesome. You, man. Thank Cheers, you so man. much, man. Cheers, Hell yeah, we'll see you guys next. Hell yeah, we'll see you guys next. Hell yeah, we'll see you guys next.